My name is Tarek Awan, and I'm a primary care sports medicine physician and an assistant professor in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at the University of Michigan. And today we're going to go over ultrasound guided shoulder injections. One thing to be aware of with musculoskeletal ultrasound is anisotropy, which is a sonography artifact associated with linear structures. It occurs when a linear structure is not 90 degrees to the ultrasound beam. It is more common in tendons and ligaments, but also present in muscle muscles and nerves to a lesser extent. Tilting the transducer will cause the structure to appear artificially absent. This is a schematic of a short axis view of the biceps tendon. This is medial, this is lateral, this is the bony acoustic landmark of the lesser tuberosity, bony acoustic landmark of the greater tuberosity. This is the bicipital groove and this hyperechoic circular structure here is the biceps tendon. And you can see as we tilt the probe back and forth, the biceps tendon will become more hypoechoic due to anisotropy. Our review of ultrasound guided shoulder injections will include the biceps tendon sheath, the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, the posterior glenohumeral humeral joint, the acromial clavicular joint or IC joint. Starting off with the biceps tendon, our orientation will be in short axis where the probe is perpendicular to the long axis of the humerus. What we see in blue is the bicipital groove. Medial to this in red is the lesser tuberosity. Lateral in green is the greater tuberosity. And in yellow, the biceps tendon spans the bicipital groove from proximal to distal. Once again, this is a schematic of the orientation of short axis approach to the biceps tendon. The probe is perpendicular to the long axis of the humerus. This is analogous to an axial MRI. And as the sound beams bisect the humerus, we have the bicipital tendon, which we will see in short axis view. Medially will be the lesser tuberosity and laterally the greater tuberosity. In this first approach to the biceps tendon, the patient is positioned supine with the arm in slight external rotation. The examiner is sitting on a stool facing the affected shoulder. The ulcer machine is on the other side of the patient for a clear line of sight to the procedure. This is a schematic to the right depicting probe position. This is the corresponding ultrasound image. This is lateral to medial. We have the lesser tuberosity here medially, the greater tuberosity laterally, the bicipital groove, and the hyperechoic circular structure of the bicep tendon. This is an in-plane approach meaning that the probe is positioned along the length of the needle, but this is short axis to the tendon, so in plane, but short axis to the tendon. And this is going to be our approach laterally to medially. The schematic here on the top, or the ultrasound image on the top, is when the palm is on the lap. If we place the palm on the outside of the thigh, as in this lower image, this places the shoulder in slight external rotation, and the subscapularis tendon becomes visible here as it attaches onto the lesser tuberosity. One thing to be aware of is the anterior humeral circumflex artery, which sits on the lateral aspect of the bicipital groove. This is depicted here with power Doppler, and this lies just lateral to the biceps tendon in the lateral portion of the groove. So you want to do these, so when you do this injection, you want to avoid the lateral portion of the bicipital groove and aim either superficial here or on the medial aspect of the bicipital groove. Here's the ultrasound image again. This is the anatomy configuration. We have the biceps tendon and the bicipital groove here in the center. You have the transverse humeral ligament. Medially is the lesser tuberosity. Laterally is the greater tuberosity. We have the subscapularis coming in and attaching on the lesser tuberosity. Medial to this is the short head of the biceps. This is the muscle. And we have the muscle, the anterior deltoid, in the subcutaneous tissue. This is the needle coming in from lateral to medial. We see the hypochoic potential space here of the biceps tendon sheath. And as the injectate is placed, we can see the biceps sheath distend. The second approach to the biceps tendon sheath is going to be long axis and in plane approach. So we're going to visualize the biceps tendon along its length. This is going to be the probe position and we're going to rotate the probe 90 degrees so we're parallel to the long axis of the biceps tendon. The patient is going to be supine or sitting. The arm is straight with the palm up. 
the examiner's position at the patient's head, either standing or sitting. The ultrasound is going to be placed in front of a sitting patient or near the head of a supine patient. The target, once again, is going to be from superficial, is going to be in the superficial aspect of the biceps tendon deep to the inferior anterior deltoid fascia. This is just a blown up image of the previous image we saw. And again, the probe is going to be parallel to the long axis of the biceps tendon. This is proximal, this is distal, this is a hypercoic fibular structure of the biceps tendon. And this is going to be our needle, or excuse me, our needle approach from superior to inferior. The next injection we're going to cover the subacromial subdeltoid bursa injection. This is deep to the subdeltoid fascia and periversal fat. It'll be superficial to the supraspanius tendon. The bursa is extremely is an extremely thin hypocoic line that's in normal cases less than one millimeter. It'll become distended in pathological cases. This picture depicts probe orientation. We're going to be parallel to the long axis of the supraspinatus, and our target's going to be superficial to the supraspinatus tendon, but deep to this very peribursal fat layer. Immediately, we have the acromion as a landmark. So our approach for this, once again, is going to be long axis and in-plane approach. We're going to be parallel to the long axis of the supraspinatus tendon. The patient is going to be sitting upright with the arm resting on the lap. The examiner is going to be sitting on a stool next to the affected shoulder. The ultrasound machine will be placed on the other side of the shoulder for a clear line of sight. The needle approach is going to be from lateral to me medial, and the needle will be placed beneath the subdeltoid fascia periversal fat layer and superficial to the supraspinatus tendon. So once again, the probe is parallel to the long axis of the supraspinatus. This is a in-plane approach, long axis to the tendon. This is the periversal fat layer. This potential space here is the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, so this will be our target site. So this is the corresponding ultrasound image. This is going to be lateral. This is going to be medial. We have the bony acoustic landmark here as the, of the acromion for reference. We have this periversal fat layer and the supraspinatus tendon and this thin hypoechoic space in between is the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. The supraspinatus attaches on the greater tuberosity and we have the deltoid muscle and the subcutaneous tissue. So the needle approach is coming in from lateral to medial. Again, we have this periversal fat layer, the supraspinatus tendon. This thin black hypoechoic region is the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, and the needles advance so we're within this bursa. And as we inject fluid, we can visualize the injectate distend the bursa and track both proximally and distally. The supraspinatus tendon attaches and ends here the greater tuberosity where the subacromial subdeltoid bursa extends distally on this, down the, the humerus. So as we inject fluid, we should see the bursa distend and the fluid track distally past the greater tuberosity. The second approach to the rotator cuff is going to be a posterior approach, but this is going to be transverse or short axis to the rotator cuff and supraspinatus. The probe is going to be rotated 90 degrees, so it's going to be perpendicular to the long, long axis of the supraspinatus. This is analogous to a sagittal MRI. We, we're going to have this characteristic wagon wheel appearance. And if we look at this approach coming in posteriorly, again, this is going to be a short axis view of the supraspinatus. These are more of the fibers of the supraspinatus. This is the infraspinatus. You can see the needle coming in from posterior to anterior, distending the bursa. As we move to the superficial aspect of the shoulder, the next injection we'll cover is the acromial clavicular joint injection. Our first approach is going to be an in-plane approach. The patient is going to be positioned sitting upright with the arm on the lap. The examiner is going to be sitting or standing facing the affected shoulder. The Alshon machine will be placed on the other side of the patient for a clear line of sight. And the needle will be advanced from lateral to medial in-plane under the ligament that bridges the acromion to the clavicle.
Moving superiorly to the shoulder, we're going to now cover the acromioclavicular joint injection. Our first approach is an in-plane approach in which the patient is sitting upright, the arm is on the lap, the examiner is sitting or standing facing the affected shoulder, the Ultron machine is on the other side of the patient for a clear line of sight. Our target is going to be a lateral to medial approach in which the needle is advanced underneath the ligament which bridge the acromion to the clavicle. In-plane approach allows full visualization full visualization of the needle, and younger patients may have less room to inject as the fibrocartilage disc occupies a majority of the joint space. This is going to be our schematic or coronal orientation of our acromioclavicular joint. One end of the probe is going to be on the acromion, the medial end is going to be on the clavicle, and then we'll span the joint. This is going to be our out-of-plane approach. The probe is spanning our two bony acoustic landmarks with the acromion being laterally, the clavicle medially, and then we have the acromioclavicular joint in the middle. We're going to take a lateral to medial in-plane approach where the needle will advance towards the joint just over the acromion. This is the corresponding ultrasound image. Once again, we have the bony acoustic landmark of the acromion, the bony acoustic landmark of the clavicle, and we have the needle coming in transversing the joint deep to the ligament. The other approach to the acromioclavicular joint is the short axis approach. And again, for orientation, the probe is spanning the joint. One end is on the acromion laterally. The other end is on the clavicle medially. We have the AC ligament overlying the joint. With this approach, the needle is just going to appear as a dot. And also with this approach, if you see here, this is the ligament, so we don't have to have the needle deep into the joint. If we're underneath here, we'll be within the joint. And you can see the needle dot here. And as we inject the fluid, we'll visualize the joint. We'll, we'll visualize the joint slightly distend from the injectate. The thing to be cautious of with the out-of-plane approach is as soon as you see the needle dot, you have to stop because that's how you know that the needle tip is underneath the probe because whether the needle is the tip or the mid portion of the needle, it's going to look the same as a dot. So as soon as you see the dot, you withdraw so it's out of the screen, you advance, and as soon as you see it into the screen, then you stop, and that's how you know the tip is underneath the probe. Moving posteriorly, the final injection we're going to cover is the posterior cubital humeral joint injection. This is a lateral to medial approach. One end of the probe is going to be on the humeral head, while the medial end of the probe is going to be on the glenoid, and we're going to span the joint. The patient will be sitting upright or in a lateral decubitus position. The arm is going to be in a rested position. The examiner of the patient is sitting. The examiner will sit posterior to the patient with the machine in front of the patient. If in the lateral decubitus position, the examiner will sit facing the front of the patient's shoulder with the machine posterior to the shoulder. This is our posterior glenear humeral joint. This is a more detailed view of the posterior glenear humeral anatomy. Once again, this probe is spanning the glenear humeral joint, the lateral end on the humeral head, the medial end on the greater tuberosity. We have the posterior portion of the greater tuberosity. We have the posterior chromium, the spine of the chromium, and the scapula medially. And for our in-plane approach, this is going to be a lateral to medial approach. This is the corresponding ultrasound anatomy. Once again, this is lateral, this is medial. We have the bony acoustic landmark of the humeral head, the bony acoustic landmark of the chromium. This hyperchoic structure here is the posterior labrum. And then we have the joint capsule, which extends from the glenoid medially to the humeral head laterally. This hypochoic stripe here is the articular cartilage. We have the infraspinatus muscle here and the deltoid muscle here. For the injection to be intraarticular, we just have to be deep to this joint capsule, which extends here from the humeral head to the glenoid. Here's an overlying schematic of the anatomy. Once again, we have the humeral head, posterior glenoid, and we have here the stripe of the capsule 
We have the hypoechoic articular cartilage of the posterior labrum here, the infraspinatus and the deltoid. So we just have to be underneath this capsule here and we'll be intraarticular. Here's the approach to the injection. Once again, it's a medial to lateral approach. Here's the needle coming in. And it's now entering deep to the joint capsule. So right here, you actually don't need to advance towards the labrum. In this area here, you can see as the needle's withdrawn, it is deep to the joint capsule. And as the injection is placed, you can actually visualize it tracking uh, along the joint capsule. This concludes our review of ultrasound-guided injections. I just want to thank everyone for their attention.